It's like the title says, I am giving away one of my YouTube paychecks. It's true, guys. The way we're going to do it is I'm going to need you guys to comment on this video and you're going to have to be subscribed. So the amount of that paycheck, well, that all depends on you guys. So everybody knows how YouTube works. You get paid per views. You get paid for commercials, watch time, so on and so forth. They're all factors on the paycheck that I receive from YouTube. The more you watch, the more people who watch, the longer they watch, and everything underneath the sun dictates how much money this person's gonna take home with this paycheck that I'm gonna give out. These are hard times, and everybody knows that everybody could probably use a little helping hand. I am blessed enough to be put in a situation like this where I can offer something like this out. Now we'll be talking about this throughout the coming weeks, and I'll be giving status quotes on where we're at on the paycheck payout status. So I'm gonna tell you something that most people won't tell you. I'm gonna tell you what I make a month on YouTube. I average between $300 up, give or take 20, 30, so almost $400, all the way down to two, 250 or something. It fluctuates people. It's all about ab revenue and so on and so forth. You guys control that paycheck amount. So the more you watch, the more that prize is gonna be. And I'm straight up gonna give it away. The one thing people might not know is YouTube is a month behind. So today, it's January 27th. We get paid, uh, YouTubers typically get paid on the 21st. So we're already six days in, the first week in of this pay period. We're sitting at probably about 250 bucks for estimated revenue. So that only gives us three weeks, three weeks to jump those numbers out of control. So some one lucky person can bring home a few hundred dollars, possibly, could be possibly more. I'm telling you, be sure to watch, run the playlist, subscribe. Here's a chance to win a few hundred bucks. I'm gonna show you something pretty cool. Something that a lot of people I don't think know about on this tractor that possibly could save your life if you were happen to do something a little bit dangerous underneath the hood and got yourself in a predicament where you need to shut this tractor off right away. So if you're asking or wondering why I'm not showing you right off the bat is because I want to get all this stuff cleaned up. I want to get all this stuff pushed out. You can see how deep it is against my car before I do this to this tractor because I've never done it before and I'm not sure what it will do once I do what I'm about to do and show you. So I'm gonna wait till I get all this stuff done, get back with you guys, and then I'm gonna show you this cool thing underneath the hood, just so I'm not dealing with any unforeseen issues. Oh my gosh, guys, it snowed so much yesterday. I wind up plowing late last night, early this morning, and the kids are just enjoying, enjoying it. That Kubota in there, she held up pretty good. The only problem was is this snow was so heavy and there's so much of it that it struggled plowing the driveway once you got a lot of snow stuck in there. What do you guys think about all this? It's amazing! I'm <laughs> very tired. You're very tired? <laughs> oh yeah. I literally had to, uh, I had to scoop snow in sections, like blade width sections off the drive to push it to the side because it was so heavy. And we're gonna, we're gonna wind up hitting this again real quick. I think this is the first time you guys have seen snow like this. Yeah. Well. You know, we used to build forts inside these things and dig them out. I, yeah, that's what I tried to do a couple days ago. Ready? You yeah. got enough now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to make a sled, sled ramp down this? Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> We're definitely doing that. <laughs> We're going to check on these goats real quick because, uh, I think I saw them out this morning, but I want to see how they're doing. This is probably the most snow we've ever gotten while we've lived here. You guys doing okay? This thing, it's like literally, it's deep. Daddy, you, pick, you take big steps. <laughs> <laughs> right? Your steps is a half the lake size of mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the most snow you've ever seen. Yeah. 
You guys are doing okay. <laughs> oh, I know what you want. Miss Autumn's holding the camera. Real hungry. <laughs> dig, Daddy, dig! <laughs> hey, bud, you get snow over me. All right. tighten these uh, buckles up when I noticed that my uh, my top pivot point pin was gone well that's not good I wonder where it went better yet I wonder how it fell out before I start getting plowing I wanted to say thank you to a viewer who noticed something on my one of my videos using this tractor he knows something very important that it caught his eye and he let me know through a comment and that was the swaying back and forth of my back blade. I tightened it up already, but it was really ex excessive. I'm talking like foot each side swaying back and forth. He noticed it really quick, and I was able to address it before I broke anything on this tractor. So, thanks, bud. Thanks for looking out. Well, she's all cleaned up, and I, man, guys, I must say, she is a beast in the snow. My gosh, I mean, literally, I'm not just saying that because I own this tractor, but I had this thing just buried in snow. I mean, just pulling it with the back blade here, pulling snow out from the houses and the structures and stuff like that, having it mound up, snow in front of me, and I'm speaking of a situation I just went through, and I was just buried in snow. I couldn't go forward and I couldn't go backwards. You know, I lift up both my implements and kick in the posi rear, and the thing just rocks and just crawls right out of it i swear i was probably buried up to here in snow no tire change just the the construction grade tires that i had on there and man this thing was superb now i didn't take any video of plowing snow because i do have videos like that i'll link them up top i probably should have because this was actually a real significant snow that really tests the limits of this machine i probably should have documented it because let's go take a look at the drive down here as you can tell these these aren't major these aren't huge but this is a lot bigger than you know your your average home and um, you know your yard tractor this is this is no punk to create uh, mountains this big granted was going downhill no chains making it back and forth no problem at all where it got a little bit sketch is going down there uh, that's where I was getting stuck at is down there by the barn <laughs> and, and uh well you know it's nothing wrong with being stuck at, at least you're stuck at home but nonetheless she crawled out of there now i will say my driveway was kind of a problem when this snow hit i had to go i couldn't just kick the blade and plow and make a, a windrow plowing the snow off because it just wasn't happening that tractor would not push that heavy snow it was coming up and over the blade and my front tires were turned and I was just driving like this. It just couldn't do it. I mean, it was pushing forward, but it just didn't have enough uh, gas, the enough, enough traction and horse purrs. More power, baby. More power, baby. To get that snow over that edge. So I had to do is I had to eat it in little sections just like this and just push it 
push it, push it real good. Push it real good. Uh, yeah, until I could start cleaning the edges off. All the way down the drive there. Now, for those who know me, the hill is treacherous. Now, I mentioned earlier about my neighbor. I spoke with him about it. It was his grandson that did it. I don't know what he was thinking. He knows that someone lives down here, but he plowed me in. Here's a picture of it. I don't know how good it will be, but here's a picture of it. Uh, early morning, late night, early morning. Trying to get up this hill is damn near impossible. You see that big old, see that big old mound of snow right there? Imagine that out to where this line's at. I had just enough to get my tractor through. This snow here, I would have to say going up this hill, trying to find a true accurate depth of how deep that snow was. I would say that's a good 13 inches, probably right there. 13 inches of of fallen snow it was soft but we had a lot of ice and snow underneath this too i don't know if that helped me get up the driveway or not but that thing she just chug a lug all the way up there i mean don't get me wrong it was sketch it was real sus because uh it was bog and you know doing the whole ba 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 <laughs> it wasn't fun but enough about that blah 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 you guys are probably all wondering about what i was talking about earlier with shutting this thing down when the hood's open it could possibly save your life yeah it's no joke let me get this hood open oh this is one thing i hate about these kubota latches these damn hoods whoo man I'm telling you okay let's get to it let me start her up i just shut it off so is she still warm so don't worry about cold starting you have your fan, you have your belt, you're all moving parts right there. Little old me, doo -doo -doo -doo. you're working on this, you're messing around, you're fiddling, fiddling around with it, whatever it may be. You get your coat sleeve caught somewhere, you can't get your arm up here, you're getting sucked in. If you could remember this in that kind of a situation, this is what you need to do. Now this lever, it's not indicated anywhere. It's not painted red. There's not a sticker for it. There's nothing. I'm going to paint this red, but the only way I found this out was through the manual. Believe that, guys. I read the manual. Yes. After being ridiculed so many times about, man, if you guys read the manual, if you just read the manual, you'd know that. Uh, for instance, uh, float mode. Yeah. So I started reading the manual and I found this real interesting thing here. And I figured, man, that's a good thing to know uh, in case you know you had a situation where you need to shut this tractor off and you couldn't reach the key. Uh, I know one thing that happens common, probably not with this tractor, is runaway diesel engines. You guys have seen them, YouTube them if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna explain it or what, what happens or how it happens, but just know it does happen. So let's get to business. Let me show you what, it, what this lever is. All right, see this guy right here? You just push it. Bam. Kills it. Not too bad, huh? Right there. Let me shut this tractor off so I can get my hands around this safely. Okay. So you see this, right? All I did, well, when it was on, there it goes. That's your solenoid fuel cutoff. I think it's on. Let me uh. All right. So you see how that kicked back? So all you gotta do is push that forward. Yeah, don't mess with any of this stuff. I noticed it has keys on it and it kicked back on its own. So it shuts the fuel off as it's shutting down the ignition system. But you can move this lever and kill the fueler's tractor. And you saw how fast that tractor shut off. So anything went funny around here, you had a runaway motor, maybe the electrical system fried out and this thing won't shut off. Just know, 
you can turn it off right there. Then you can move to things like the battery, pulling yourself out of the situation, removing yourself from the situation because there's a lot, a lot of rotating parts in this motor. You got the flywheel, you got the belt, fan. There's a whole lot of nope underneath the hood of this thing if you're messing around with it running. So I figured I'd show you guys that. It might be well known, I'm not sure. I couldn't really find anything on the internet, or should I say, I couldn't really find anything on the internet or YouTube about this on a BX2380 or just the BX series at all. Or matter of fact, really nothing Kubota shows that. So I might be the first to actually document that safety device and God, I hope it saves somebody's life or prevents somebody from severe injury. So that's what I had to show you guys. I'm sorry you guys had to wait for it for so long, but I had a lot of stuff to get done. And you know, I really appreciate you guys watching the video through and uh, subscribing if you're not subscribed already. I have a lot about, oh no, 70% of you guys out there don't subscribe to my channel and you just watch the videos, which I get it. You guys just wanna know stuff about the tractor. Not a big deal. But do me a favor and subscribe, because like I told everybody else in a lot of other videos, if there's something about this tractor I don't like, or there's something I love about this tractor, I'm gonna let you know. It's gonna be unbiased if I have a complete turd, or if there's something that really makes me mad about this tractor, just because I own it, doesn't mean I'm not gonna let you guys know. So, appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you on the next video.